Hi, my name is Xiao Long Chao, and you're watching the Permanent Rain Press. Hi everyone, it's Chloe with the Permanent Rain Press, and today I am so happy to be joined by Xiao Long. Zhao, how are you? I'm lovely, thank you. How are you? I'm doing good, thanks for asking. I'm excited to be chatting with you, and we have a lot to discuss, so let's mm -hmm. dive right in. You're very artistic between your passions for both music and film, so tell me, what was your childhood like? Were you immersed at the in the arts at a young age? Well, arts has, like for me in my childhood, has come in many forms. I've uh, been very active with my body and stuff. So I danced a lot during my childhood, but it wasn't anything that I, that I wanted to do, certainly. Like I, I yeah, I don't know. It didn't spark anything, um, but music did, definitely. Um, uh, but music has been in my life as for many others um, throughout, like since I was born, definitely. My mom has been singing uh, songs for me when I was in the belly and, 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 and all of that. Like music has definitely been the thing that I uh, stuck to and something that I want to continue uh, in the future, definitely. Um, but movies uh, has also inspired me a lot um childhood has been mostly studio ghibli um i have a little fun thing that i had i watched it so many times on the swedish swedish dub that i can recite the whole entire movie from start to finish in swedish <laughs> uh, so it's quite a fun thing but but i never would have foreseen that i'd be taking a part of this big of a series like like it's it's huge but during my childhood it's, it's been it's been a lot of things um definitely i love that you mentioned that you know your mom sang to you in in her belly because i think that that's always like the first introduction right to to mm -hmm. music even though you mm -hmm. might not have such vivid memories of those times but mm -hmm. you do play over five instruments and i know you're really open to playing any instrument thrown at you so how did you keep up the motivation to learn I think I think the passion about instruments is that every instrument has a certain character to it. It conveys a certain emotion and and put together with a lot of other instruments, it's it has a certain role. And as a as a really young kid, I like there were so many music impressions of of people playing the violin or people playing the saxophone or people playing lots of instruments. I, I remember one time, um, I don't know if that person still does that anymore, but they had like this big drum on their back connected to their feet. So when they were like walking, they could have the ba like bass drum and then they could play the guitar. And as well, they had like, a, like a keyboard connected to their waist <laughs> and played multiple instruments at the same time. But like, um, I think I really, I really got inspired of, of like conveying that emotion through instruments. And, and I think I still have, like, I still have that passion definitely. And there's still so many instruments that I'd love to learn and, and understand, um, which is also why I love, uh, being at this music school that I'm studying at right now, uh, Gotland School, uh, a school of music composition. But yeah, so that that's that's why I, like the motivation is just to be able to you know speak that language through the instruments. Definitely. Have you ever picked up like all, all these instruments at once and tried that out yourself? I feel like those are like street performers, right? So, so mm -hmm, they go yeah. out, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, no, like never tried just, it yet. <laughs> no, actually not. But it was my dream when I was a kid. It's like everybody wants to be like it. Either oh, people want to be princesses or kings or or um, policemen or firefighters. I wanted to be a, <laughs> like that musician on the street. I feel to, like you still have yeah. time to do that too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I do. It just craves a lot of 
uh, rehearsal and a lot of uh, like I think you have to mech with a lot of things like I'm not I'm not very handy with those kind of tools but I think it'd be a fun project <laughs> maybe in the future yeah a pipe dream just putting that out there mm -hmm, definitely <laughs> you used to play accordion and trumpet in a salsa band tell me a bit mm -hmm. about that Oh yeah, um, actually my partner, uh, we're also newly engaged. Um, we, uh, we met at Rhythmus Music uh, High School, I guess you would call it, gym gymnasium, but uh, gymnasium. Uh, and this end project is, uh, is called Live Night. And what you do is that you either take uh, you either take like you just take a set of four songs and then you come together and perform it on a big stage and uh, people did like tributes to different artists uh so i was i was in a lot of uh a lot of the live nights because i had so many instruments i could play so i was uh, i was used very well um uh but yeah live night i played like the most instruments I played on live night. So I played the trumpet, uh, like the Caribbean live night, the, the one my partner uh, held. Um, so I played the, I played the nose flute. I have it here, actually. It's, you put it, you put it against your nose and then you blow and then you use your, like you use your mouth to do the pitches and stuff. It sounds hilarious, but, um, and I play the accordion and the trumpet and a lot of the percussion instruments as well as singing. So that was great fun. It, it definitely takes me back. I miss performing on stage. Like it's, it's really fun. Uh, hopefully you will get more opportunities in the future. Um, I thought you were going to demonstrate for, for a second. Oh yeah, do you want me to? It's so loud though. Okay. That's you can a, slide and that's do. That's like a, a sound yeah. effect. It sounds like a sound yeah. effect. Yeah, it's like the the slide flute, but then you can, you just keep it against your nose. It's it's more efficient. You don't have to do a bunch of movements. <laughs> yeah, super compact. Hey, mm -hmm. definitely. So we will talk more about your your studies at music school, but let's shift gears. Talk about Young Royals, which is your debut acting project. Tell me a bit about your audition process and how you were cast as Alexander. It, it goes far back. It's quite far fetched, but to keep it short, I was casted uh, for a Volvo commercial um, and uh, it was just a side job because I was bartending um, besides that. And I thought, why not? It'd be fun to be in a Volvo commercial. Um, however, I didn't get into that thing, but I did such a good impression on the person holding the project or the casting. So she then asked me if I was interested in, uh, in acting in a Netflix show. And I was, I thought it was a scam at first, <laughs> like not going to lie. <laughs> but I, I was like, why not? Why not take the chance and just roll with it? I have no experience whatsoever, but um, I do have a deep passion for film. So I said yes. And uh, I went on to uh, castings for that. And then the rest is history. I guess what they say is true. Like, you never know if you don't try, right? So you went out for the Volvo <laughs> commercial, didn't book that. But you, you mm. got this show that's now in so many different countries. So I would say it's an audition well went to. Mm -hmm, definitely. I'm so happy. Like, I'm so grateful. So we are going to be talking spoilers in this interview. So please make sure you are all caught up on Young Rose season one on Netflix before continuing. We know Alexander comes from a wealthy family. His father owns Breyer Investments. What kind of preparation did you do for this role? And are there any specific films, characters, or series that you found inspiration in? That's a good question. Um, personally, Wow, yeah, no, I don't know where, where to begin. I think um, I think for Alexander, I, I, I usually see side characters as something that, that, that kind of like colors the main character. Like it, 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 like it brings more of a, like a clear palette for, for the, 
the main characters, you know. Uh, and so for me, I approached Alexander as um, as to enhance the sadistic um, characteristics from like characteristics from August. And with that, I just I fully focused on the main characters around me and what his purpose is to fulfill within uh, within the rest of the people around. Um, and with that, I don't think I found, I don't think I leaned for an inspiration or any character because like with that, it's such unique scenarios. I wouldn't be able to probably like fully place uh, um, like two characters together and say like, oh yeah, I, I, I think, uh, I think they're like, I think they're the same, but I think I, yeah, no, but I, I definitely focused on August's character more, um, and as well as Edwin, but not so much, but it was more August. It's really interesting to hear that, how you kind of shape your character based off, you know, what's going on around you. And I think that that's something you have to be super intuitive to, like not only reading the scripts, but following the scenes and playing off of, of other characters' emotions and reactions. And um, what was interesting about Alexander is, you know, he comes from a wealthy family, but he's not of noble birth. And you can see he has humility to him. So is that like one of the aspects you kind of honed in on to con trust August and, and the society definitely I think he was thrown into into something that was so much bigger than him um something that he found more value compared to his father maybe um and with that I think he wanted to pursue something that would be led to success um but had to do whatever he was being told to do and I think like he has a lot of similarities with, with the position um, of, of luck um, to have a father that has a lot of wealth and, and company and, and things are going good for him, but it's the pressure from the parents, I, I believe that kind of um, made him shift focus elsewhere to something that would eventually hurt him, you know? He's definitely an interesting character th to think about in terms of like those goals and motivations that you you kind of touched on there, maybe hoping that what he was doing would pay off eventually. Um, we know that it didn't. So let's talk a bit about his demise where he took the fall for the drugs and was expelled from Hilerska. Uh, when you read the scripts for episodes four and five, did any of it surprise you or did you expect that this could be coming? Mm um like i i don't think i was surprised really uh because when it comes down to it it's a uh, it's uh he yeah no like it, it didn't really surprise me he was already in such a uh submissive role um and um i think there was a lot of bottled up emotions um when he actually got expelled but i think uh, it was quite predictable to uh, with that but i think i think it it gave an impact still like it it, it wasn't the oh that's a cliche type of type of scenario uh, it was more of the um you felt bad for alexander as well as you understood that that were like that was the best decision for edwin and simon uh simon too yeah yeah and um something interesting with that was uh you know when the society were blaming Alexander. I think one of them described him as being pushy and aggressive. I was just thinking when I was watching that, that that's further from, mm -hmm. that can't be furthest from the truth. How could they buy this collusion? <laughs> when you were watching the show for the first time, did you think something similar? No, I thought that was absurd. And I thought it was a, it was a quite a comedic scene to watch for myself. I don't know how, how others would have felt seeing that, but I thought it was, hilarious to talk about Alexander in in that 
sadistic like 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 portrait I don't know like it was just really funny to me it was like a like the comedic scene of it all I think (laughs) yeah I know Um, it was it was trying to be serious but at the same time you're thinking like hmm like how could these people they know Alexander like he is a kind of not the head boy but like he's helping Mm. around the boarding house and the school Mm. and everything Um, something I do like that unfortunately less screen time for you but it was intentionally as you mentioned left out how he actually got caught with the drugs if you were to paint a scene on how that happened what do you think you know occurred oh yeah I imagine a lot lot of action no (laughs) like maybe um but I I think I can I can probably imagine him being caught like late in the night and probably very scared of what's what's to happen but I think um I think he he would mostly be scared but also kind of upset and I think that would just be a continuous build up to probably being relieved to to go to uh, Switzerland um maybe or maybe not maybe he's feeling a lot of vengeance <laughs> I don't know uh, that's just my thought on it <laughs> late at night I had something similar so I was thinking he was um on his way back to the boarding house this is after Mm. the initiation party and then he he stumbles on the steps and all the drugs pour out and cause a commotion and a staff member comes out (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. he just have to pick it up in 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 stressful moment and then he finally gets caught and he doesn't know what to say yeah I i can definitely see that but something where he where he he becomes the clumsy one because I also have one thing in the first day of uh, of shooting I was so uh, nervous but excited um, but the first scene was uh, was when I uh, get to meet uh, the prince for the first time and which is also the first scene uh, of me shown but there um, when we did the rehearsal I <laughs> Uh, when I was going to pick up the bags and place them down, they unintentionally, they just fell to the ground. And I was like baffled. I was like, what do I do now? What what would I do now? Am I still going to be in, uh, you know, am I still in my character? Am I still in my character? And I was like, what would he do? Uh, and then I just instantaneously, I picked up the bags and I apologized like sincerely. I was like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I pick them up again and then I run like I run back to to stand on the side for them to take pictures. I remember Rosta was just like <laughs> laughing out loud. And that was like the first th- scene of the day. Uh, fortunately, it was a rehearsal, but it was it was great fun. Uh, but I think that he would just do something really clumsy like that, like just completely just leave them out in the open. I don't know, maybe drop the pills on the ground and be like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like that is a bit of probably um, naivety. Uh, he's young. I, I think that's funny. You had to get those first day jitters out for, for the scene and then you were good to go from there. Yeah, definitely. Can we talk about Frida's baby yeet meme that she posted on Twitter? Uh, where? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what were yeah. your thoughts? Was that the first time you saw that? Like she just posted it on Twitter and you saw it? Uh, I think I made I think she made it I don't know I'm not sure uh it was just really funny it just made me cackle <laughs> it I don't know it's it's just very accurate to say the least it's it's just like it's just perfect <laughs> it's a really good meme she she knows her she knows her memes <laughs> Yeah, we we spoke with her. She's also like, I love her sense of humor, too. She's funny. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And yeah, that you hit the nail on the head. It was so accurate. Uh, Poor, Mm -hmm. poor baby, poor Alexander, always getting used. (laughs) What was your favorite scene to be a part of and why? Uh, My favorite scene was the party scene. Uh, I think it was also the day where we got to know, like, know each other what like more uh it was a very long day so we had a lot of time um but yeah I think it was just it was just nice to see everybody gathered and and just having fun like of course there's no music in the background actually playing but 
like I could imagine it. It's just like uh, how I imagined it to be uh, when we were there. Um, but yeah, that was that was probably my favorite scene because uh, it just shows how how we got together uh, as a like friends um, in the in the scene definitely. You could have fooled me that there was music playing because it looked like everyone was bouncing up and down to the soundtrack that they ended up um, putting yeah. in the show. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I even do the little Bobby head thing. <laughs> <laughs> what cues did they give you? You're listening to really good upbeat music right now. Mm -hmm. Definitely, like just just rave music, like full blasting. <laughs> and no, you got I, to wear the heart shaped glasses. Yeah, no, I think I just picked them up. Uh, I one time I think I gave them to to Frida for her to like wear them as well so th they were just going back and forth between us <laughs> uh, but they're they're iconic glasses for Alexander like it's his it's his glasses heart-shaped glasses <laughs> I don't know and where you, they are though now <laughs> did you get <laughs> to take them from set no no I didn't take them but I I wish <laughs> yeah he looked happy wearing them that's for sure Mm. so how about as a viewer which was your favorite scene oh my favorite scene was um the build-up where uh where Sara just lashes out on her mom and just family like completely disrespect her family over over the fact that she isn't fitting in to the standard uh, of being royal um i think that scene was very it was very well portrayed like i have i have friends in the same uh situation and they they're just saying that they they like that was probably like the best scene they've ever uh seen being portrayed in a in a in a middle class scenario um with with the pressure of uh of what could have been or what you could be um but it's just it's just so sad to see because she has all the right because she doesn't know um what love is but she gets to experience it for the first time at the school or she believes what uh or she believes that that's love but it actually isn't and and also just having a friend and wanting to be perfectly fitted into that world um but isn't and, and I just think that that scene is just so powerful to see uh because you think she's wrong but then like it justifies on how she feels and what she, she's been going through in her head I love that analysis that you did and uh, she did, Frida did such an incredible job and uh, the same with uh, Carmen who who plays Linda and then of course Omar as, mm -hmm. as Simon because as you mentioned mm -hmm. it's a lot of I think like misplaced emotions and um, that's what young people, that's what teenagers go through so it was so beautifully portrayed in the show. Uh, now justice for Alexander is a thing because he was yeah. wronged should season two be greenlit and I want to make this clear that this is separate of any discussions that may or may not be going on in the writer's room but do you think that there could be a return for Alexander and if so what would you like to see? Mm. If I were to fantasize um, uh, for a season two I would definitely like it would definitely be a fun fun plot to see him come back uh like imagine his bottled up emotions and him being finally probably like him probably only have the chance to actually uh fully express his emotions and his probably anger i think i think alexander is, just has a lot of anger um bottled up um but i think if he were to come back there would probably be a lot more uh vengeance filled in him uh definitely he would probably just want to <laughs> throw august under the bus or something no <laughs> um but yeah i don't know um i think i think that's how i imagine alexander's comeback and i think he would uh i think it'd be a fun uh drift to the plot if he came back i think so 
Yeah, for sure. Um, I would love to see some sweet revenge. But uh, what was interesting is August actually, he was going to be the one stepping up and saying Alexander shouldn't take the fall. And he went to blame Simon. And it was actually Wilhelm who kind of switched that decision around. Yeah. So I feel like he Alexander would assume that it was August exactly. but who knows yeah. you know he would probably be disappointed uh to hear that it was a Wilhelm's ultimate decision but it, I think it does leave some space for you know as you mentioned him to come back and kind of resolve what happened there yeah, um, yeah. but school in Switzerland also sounds fun mm -hmm. he's probably having a rave there too <laughs> Um, something that I've gotten to know by talking with this cast is so many of you are musically talented. So as corny as it sounds, a uh, musical episode, is that something that you would be up to doing? Uh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously. I, I think it would be great fun. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I, I vouch for that. <laughs> Hilerska puts on a, a school play or something like mm. did you so you grew up with a lot of film uh, what were some of your favorites or maybe plays if you like were involved in musicals and things like that oh I haven't watched that many musicals actually growing up uh there wasn't really anything that I was introduced to um uh, but I think like I've seen snippets of Hamilton I think that is a great musical uh, but I have a whole list of musicals actually my my roommate um, has made up plans for it, us to just watch musicals together so I have a lot of work to do <laughs> that's a good uh, plan though mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, did you ask about any films or anything that yeah what are some some films that you really enjoy that you kind of have inspired you to you know start acting in the first place uh I think well I the more like the movies that I have watched is more inspiring in, a, in like from a director's perspective I've uh I'm very much a critique when it comes to movies and I find a lot of inspirations when I see good directing good uh screenplay and just good writing um and uh, one of my one of my inspirations are I well if I can come up with anything in my head is like Midsummer, um, Marriage Story, um, uh, Advantageous, which is a really good uh, old movie that I watched when I was I was quite young. Um, uh, but then it, yeah, no, I think I think I see it more in in that perspective not not as an acting perspective I think um no I can't really come up with anything actually uh sadly but maybe there is something <laughs> um, I think it's always like though what you mentioned um good films like these are the intricacies you kind of look for and it, it gets you thinking about maybe wanting to be involved um because you have now been on like a film tv set being in young royals what did this project teach you about yourself as an actor and just overall take away from that experience that I think what I've learned is that you definitely don't like what you learn uh the most from is when you just throw yourself into it directly like i think um when you get to be part of projects that that has a lot of um uh, like has a lot of history to it i i don't know like i think i think i learned a lot more than i could have at a school or uh, but it's just the 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 experience to just be a part of it in that room. I think it's just uh, that is uh, what I've learned from it. Um, and I don't know, like I just think it's, um, yeah, no, I th I think that's that's what I would conclude it to. Just throw yourself out into a into a production, and you'll definitely be fine um people are there have, who have had a lot of experience and you'll be able to lean on those people as well um but acting i think 
I don't know, like I didn't know I had it in me, <laughs> but it's very exciting. Um, and I really want to continue uh, acting in the future if, if there are opportunities that come. I think that you have a future in whatever you choose to do, uh, music or acting. Now, aside from the party scene, what was your favorite moment, do you think, when the cameras weren't rolling, like hanging out with this cast? Um, man, it was just talking with the people there. And it's just a lot of good stories uh, to hear from so many people. Uh, I love the cast so much. Uh, we're like, we're great friends too. So, um, and I think I, I, I was in the piano room a lot or like, you know, where the piano is, I, I, I like to just jam out a lot. So I, I spent my time there <laughs> just tinkering, <laughs> playing the piano, coming up with ideas for, for future compositions and whatnot. <laughs> I love that being on set was like you were just using it as your time to also like compose music. You're like, I think, well, this piano room is here. I might as well make use of this piano. Yeah, nobody was there. <laughs> so we just sat there. So you and Malte are good friends in real life. Had you known each other prior to filming the show? No, not at all. Uh, I think we just clicked the first day. Uh, he was the first person I talked to. So it just came naturally. And, and since we even make uh, music together. So yeah, no, like we weren't friends at all, but we just clicked so well. <laughs> 180 yeah. degree differential and dynamics between you and Malte and yeah. Alexander and August uh, that was going to be what I wanted to ask is I know he's a musician uh, you both play instruments really well I think he plays the piano um, you play just a plethora of instruments so what kind of music have you been working on together is it just jam sessions or have you been recording stuff it's just mostly jams uh, like I usually well this recent time and just picked up the, the guitar just played some chords and he he kept on going with his melody and we were just on the computer and just mixing up something just labbing and and having fun uh, it's mostly jams yeah uh, so it's not really structured in any way but I think that's where where music really thrives when you just come spontaneously yeah, and the best music, I mean, they're always born out of raw demos and stuff like that, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the fans of the show are so passionate. You've been feeling a lot of love on social media. What is the support meant to you? Oh, it's meant, like, in, like immensely a lot. Like, it's just so much love, and and I think... For me, it just means a lot. I would have definitely wanted something like this, building a community and, and having um, us actors interact with all of the fans the way we do and just have built this safe space for LGBTQ plus POC people or maybe people that aren't even sure what they are. They just feel comfortable and welcome and accepted. And I think that it's just, it's just meant so much to me it's it's almost a bit therapeutic <laughs> in, in a way because I would have definitely wanted that as a kid what are some things that you have either seen or read that have been memorable or or spoke to you I think it's uh, people that feel represented um, as an LGBTQ plus and and Asian uh, um, that people have just felt represented and have hopes for their future as well in acting or whatever they want to pursue in. Um, that, that has just meant so much. And I think that's something that has really stuck with me because there's such a lack of it. And uh, it means a lot that I will be one of the few people to uh, start, you know, yeah, and you are in some group chats, Little Dragons group chats. Yeah. How did this all come about? Uh, well, I think there was a there was a 
the person that asked me if I if I would mind being in a group chat with fans and I don't think I um I don't think I ever came to reply on that but I was definitely intrigued I I thought about it for a while and then um one evening I just tweeted that oh yeah I always miss the spaces because I always like I'm either at school or I'm like cooking food or like I'm, I'm keeping myself very busy right now but um but then people uh started sending me this the the spaces on uh, under the twitter post that i posted and then i went on to a space and they invited me uh, into a group chat and it was just so uh, like a bunch of lovely people on there and i had great fun they <laughs> all sang in unison a bunch of like old pop music <laughs> it was just so funny um but yeah, I, I, that's how it came about. And I'm still in it. It's lovely. I love the people there. As you mentioned, they're so kind. And it's so nice to connect with, with these people on another level. And that makes mm. it like personable. And um, hopefully you get to spend some more time on there when you are free. Because I know you're very busy with school. Um, but another form of therapy. So, <laughs> you know, never yeah, yeah. It, it can always help. Uh, you are a person of color and you actively voice your support for the transgender community and equal rights. If you don't mind sharing, what are some barriers that you have faced personally and, and how has that impacted your life? Uh, well, as I said previously, it's just the lack of representation in media, whether it would be uh, uh, whether it would be uh, in music or uh, film, but especially film. Um, I like I am transgender myself, and I've gone through it all, and uh, um, I'm finally comfortable with who I am today, and uh, with that, as a kid, I, I, I was lacking that representation from the start, and it's something that I would have deeply appreciated um uh, as a young per like as a kid you know growing up and not knowing who I am it, it took longer than it needed to be and I think even with with the uh with represent like with the, the like depicting transgender people uh, in film has been acted by cis people the people that haven't gone through it and and with that is it's just so uh sad because it's just a loss of 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 motivation for a lot of transgender people feeling like they are less than or not as talented or uh, don't have it in them because they're different and that is just so wrong to me and i just think that has been the, the the hardest thing for me. It's just been the lack of res representation around me. And it it goes quite deep, but day-to-day uh, -day life is already a barrier. But yeah, that's, that's, that's what I can say if I keep it short. I just want to say that it takes so much strength and vulnerability to share your story. So I'm happy that you are here and continuing this conversation and how we can really listen and create change, especially in, in the film and TV industry. You mentioned representation, a show like Young Girls is so good at that with their casting, but like, what else mm -hmm. do you think needs to be done personally in order to open opportunities for artists like yourself and just further expand that diversity? well i think um i think it's just to to challenge the the norms uh whether it would be in a directing perspective or within the gender roles or uh, with culture um or narrative like it's uh it's important to to raise questions that are um active today and there are um there are an issue today and without there's there's a vast category of things that you could you could do with that um 
but with acting i think it's just you know race uh, it's also things that i have uh, uh gotten inspired by the most in film is where they have per, like broken the norm uh and i think that is something that it needs to be uh, needs to be more of that not just within the story but also behind the scenes like um but i i love i love that with young royals that it, there are you know it's just women um in power there and uh Rosta director like director and lisa and Bjarnas, the uh, writer and and Erika Kameer, you know, like it's it's uh, that's what's important to me. I think that's something that you can definitely work on. Uh, but there's a change, uh, of course. Uh, so it's not like it's still it's still started. Uh, yeah, I think that as actors, like you mentioned, it must be so empowering to see all these women and female identifying not only. Um, the three of them but a lot of the crew you had your IC as well and yeah like I love that you touch on some really important points it starts behind the scenes like making sure people take the effort to connect with artists of color and the LGBTQ community and really you know hear those stories and then cast people who who are appropriate for those roles so thank you for speaking with us about that and this is a safe space I know a lot of fans will be just so they're already so supportive of you and it's such an inclusive fandom so uh, hopefully this love will continue in in your future projects and, and what you want to do uh, cycling back to music school you mentioned you're currently at Gotland tell me about your your studies and what your end goal is with your program Mm. Um, well, I started this school um, with the purpose of trying to understand the music language better uh, as a creator, um, as a composer. So if, if I were to put it shortly, it would be that um, to gain the, the knowledge of the history and 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 the instruments and and everything and just jumble it all together to be able to connect closer to the music that I make, uh, and so it is yeah it isn't about um, trying to motivate myself to make music but it's about coming closer to the music that I already make, um, and uh, my hopes like my end goal I think it would just be being a part of of uh, of prod like projects that uh that tell a history in music whether it would be in film or uh or games or uh and whatnot um i definitely love uh, or my hopes is that i'll become a composer for film and games uh yeah so musically, you're inspired by composers, but also artists like Gautier, Jacob Collier, Radiohead. How would you describe the sound and the music that you like to make today? Um, I really like making, um, how would you say, like pretty music. It's like with a lot of uh, harmony, a lot of like pretty melodies with big orchestrations uh, that is something that I really like to make uh, which is not uh, what I listen to uh, strangely enough um, with with Gautier, Jacob Collier and, and Radiohead and more um, uh, they're artists that inspire me as a creator and probably like and some bits in music but mostly uh as a creator and in, in the creating perspective um they they like to break uh like the standard and they they like to experiment a lot with the music and come up with all sorts of new things um like gotcha as a sample a tinkerer like he doesn't call himself a music uh a producer or a songwriter he's a he's a music tinkerer. And I think that's such a, like a special thing uh, to see it in that perspective. Like they, they're so very delicate about their crafts and I, it's very inspiring. 
um, in the creating perspective. And also I love listening to it too. <laughs> Yeah, you can tell that like those three acts and then composers, like there's just so much technical skill involved and they all have like really good distinct visions for, for their sound and then they're, they, they're able to put it out there. Um, who else are you listening to on your playlist if, if you had to scroll through like your Spotify? Ooh, well, right now I've been exposed to a lot of classical music, uh, but uh, my favorite artist as of now that I listen to repeatedly actually my roommate introduced me to him and he is just magical like beyond words uh Tigran Hamasian and he is um uh he's very rhythmical and very like he he's uh he's probably one of the uh, one of the composers that I uh get inspired by the most as of now um but yeah and um i i like to listen to elephant gym which is a taiwanese math rock band i like to just listen to um like just chinese singing and and it's just this modern uh music background because i've i've been like when it comes to chinese music i've only been exposed to like folk music and uh, like lullabies and that's it and so listening to this is just like wow okay this is what i wanted to listen to for a long time and this is perfect this is perfect for me <laughs> so elephant gym and if i were to tone it down a bit it's just lizzie mcalpine like yeah with elephant gym you posted yeah. them on your instagram story so i went and listened to it was their audio tree live session of finger i think that was the song yeah and it was so good can we talk about how good their bassist is she's phenomenal oh, she's crazy good i don't understand like it doesn't sound like it's three people playing mostly like i don't i don't like it's so inspiring and i think it's just so close to heart because like china like chinese has just been through uh my whole life so it's just like it's just really cool to see i'm she's crazy <laughs> and just the whole band is really good i really like them and there's not a lot of like i would say hopefully it gets better but mainstream like asian artists like i know mm. nowadays um oh, it's like i can't even name a lot of them off the top of my head because they don't get a lot of radio play um yeah I... yeah be, do, uh, there's I'm like uh, be be uh, be, be, do, be no yeah like I can't <laughs> yeah, be, be. Uh, I think I've, I'm thinking of um, Joji too yes and Japanese like breakfast Ryan what's his last name uh, Brian what's his name oh <laughs> he had another name that he went by a man was it Emmanuel um I'm not sure but. I, I can definitely recommend like the 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 music company that has that has taken like Asian people like Asian music creators in is 88 and rising um and like I think a few years ago I was like whoa I really want to do this I really want to be an 88 and rising because I feel represented there uh, like I feel like my face fits there but the music wasn't really there <laughs> But uh, it just feels like a like a really nice jumble of people um, that create music. Um, but be I think Bia Badubi is in that I believe, or maybe she's on her own. I'm not sure. But yeah. Yeah, but they are creating a nice collective over there, and you know you're mm. working on your music, getting stuff done, mm -hmm. manifest, put that out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And our signature question for you, if you could be any ice cream flavor, which would you be and why? Oh, my God. Uh, oh. <sighs> well, I was going to say pistachio because my mom loves pistachio and I've grown to love pistachio as well. And that's my. I think that's my final answer. <laughs> yeah. Gotta go with the one that that your mom loves, right? Yeah, and I love it too, like so much. And the green color, it's so pretty. It's my favorite color too, so. It fits. 
perfectly. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time to chat. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure to catch Xiao Long in Young Royals. Season one is out now on Netflix and we will see you next time.